And now, please welcome member of the Group Executive Committee, Group Chief Marketing Officer and Managing Director, Hotels and Resorts at Chewy Group, Eric Primer, in discussion with Skift Founding Editor and Executive Editor, Dennis Shaw. Hey, everybody. Uh, thank you, Eric, for being here. We have to keep this group on its toes. The networking break is after this, so uh, let's keep it real here. Okay. <laughs> is TUI an OTA or a tour operator or a mashup? What are you guys these days? Yeah, that's, I mean, it's great to speak after the previous presentation. I never heard such a good pitch for all-inclusive, and I mean, I'm kind of representing that segment here of the industry in the room, so. Is that close I, to your heart, I, all inclusive? It, it is, it is. Okay. I mean, um, it's a proposition that has worked very well. And coming out of COVID, it's interesting to see how competitors, very upmarket brands now, are also coming to the conclusion that all inclusive seems to have good things that they also consider and launch in the market. But back to your question. So I'm, I'm doing two things, and actually I'm the personalization of, of TUI. So I'm running marketing as a group function across all businesses, and then I'm also doing the hotel business. Of course, if you ask people here in London on the street, most will tell you we are a tour operator. Right. Because most of them don't know that half of our earnings come from our hotel businesses. Wow. It's, um, quick, it's, it's growing more quickly, and it is also more profitable than our core business. But those things play well together, and of course we started as a tour operator, and then this kind of hotel business emerged out of our core activity. So does one part of the business learn from the other? Um, hotels learn from the tour operator business and vice versa? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 original, the, the initial setting was that TUI as a brand managed the sales in the source markets, like the UK, Germany. I mean, we are mostly known in, in Western and, and North, Northern Europe. And then we had lots of partners and destinations that actually provided the experience. And over time, we realized that we are also experts in creating and operating experiences. And so one came to the other, and we first started through joint ventures. And then at a certain point, we thought maybe we can even do it ourselves. And that was then the starting point to create TUI hotels and resorts and to look at this as a business that, of course, works very well with our tour operators, but is not only serving our tour operators. Because in the beginning, the tour operator said, hey, it's great to have a TUI brand, a TUI hotel brand that we can sell ourselves. It helps us to differentiate our sales proposition in the market. But um, what we then saw is that we can even grow beyond the needs of our tour operators because this market, hotel and resorts, is growing so quickly and also in, in um, destinations where we are not that particular strong as a tour operator. So we kind of partly decoupled ourselves from the tour operator. Right. So that's the strategy, to expand in markets where you don't have a tour operator presence to attract a, a different customer? Yeah, that's two different things. So on the sales side, yes. I mean, our marketplace products are now um, going into source markets where we are not that well known mm -hmm. yet. And um, we are doing it, of course, mainly through, through digital channels at this point. And with regards to the destinations, I mean, we are super strong in Europe, of course, West Met, East Met, North Africa, strong in the Caribbean. Um, but not so strong in the Middle East, Africa, and Southeast Asia. And those are the destinations where we think we can grow beyond the tour operator. Um, I mean, still offering our products to them, but um, looking for more customers directly in other markets. Right. So uh, you, you did have a bit of news uh, in recent days. You did a $1.8 billion capital raise. So what does that mean for TUI? What does that mean for the hotel business? Well, that's great news. I mean, we didn't do it yet. We oh. announced it. It's, okay. in, it's in the making. Don't count but, your chickens. But, but, but um, um, no, it, it was announced, but it still needs to be, needs to be finished. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, that's great news for us. I mean, we were financially very strong before COVID. 
um, the share of hotels, for example, that we own is relatively high when you compare it to other hotel chains, so roughly 50%, 46, 48%. The rest are so management we invested contracts. a lot of money into, into hotels. Right. Of course, with COVID, um, that was really difficult. Um, and uh, we, we almost doubled our debt, and now we are, let's say, fixing the balance sheet. So assuming this uh, goes well, that then again gives us the opportunity to start growing again, even though we changed our investment approach, so not only in ownership or lease, but also uh, management and franchise. So does it mean um, new hotel brands? So I see you have 15 hotel brands, but only about 10 that you focus on. So is it time to, to kill some brands, to add some brands? How do you look at it? Yeah, um, I mean, I've, the travel industry loves brands, mm -hmm. and um, they, they, I think creating brands is, is one of the main things that, that we like to do. The thing is, how do you maintain brands, and how do you grow brands? So I would say 10 core brands is exactly the right number. We are now up to target let's say, target groups that we already have in our customer base, that, but that we want to put more focus on. So we are going to relaunch one of our brands, and we are also maybe launching one or two in addition, specifically targeting, the, uh, targeting those new segments. But I think uh, we are now talking about 400 plus hotels for, for two hotels and resorts. 10, 12 brands is maybe a good number. Um, so we, we should grow the number of hotels quicker than the number of brands of our hotels. So, right. Which um, brand are you relaunching? So um, we are currently looking at um, relaunching a brand that we call Saneo. It's a um, sun and beach clubby brand. It's, it's not a core club brand, but it has some club um, elements and um, is built on the interaction between guests as well as the staff. And we are looking into that, making it broader and allowing more customers to enjoy it. So you mentioned all inclusive. So I was at our opening reception last night and I was minding my own business, standing in a corner. A couple of people came up to me and they asked me who I'm interviewing on stage. So I said, Eric from TUI. And uh, I'm interviewing him about hotels and luxury. And they said, TUI, luxury? Is that a challenge? Yeah, we already have luxury resorts. It depends always what, what you call luxury, right? I'm, I'm not um, talking now about the ultra luxury segment. I'm, I'm talking more, let's say, the, the uh, lower luxury segment that we are talking. I mean, TUI is, is known to sit in the middle of the market. And um, in some of the markets, we are a bit more um, um, above the middle, so a little bit more premium, like in Germany, for example. But we sit in the middle of the market. And that's why we said, hey, let's look at the edges, meaning value and meaning luxury. And um, we are targeting both at the moment, but um, we have experience in running luxury. So Hapag Lloyd as a cruise line, I don't know if you are aware of this, they are the inventors of cruise, actually. It's, it's an ultra luxury proposition. Um, and we also ran some um, resorts in, in Tuscany, also five stars leading hotels of the world like type of um, hotels, so we have experience. We now take that experience and create a new brand and then are gonna launch that later this year. Right, so I read that uh, to secure your future, TUI's future, you're, you're targeting uh, two demographics. And I'm gonna ask the audience which group they belong to. Mm -hmm. So one is the Travelistas, I like that name. They're described as they're younger, independent, and adventurous, lower expenditure, expenditure higher frequency. And then on the other hand, there are the energized adventurers. Those are older, confident, and more affluent into culture and exploration. exploration. So how many of you are travelistas? Very they, they, few. They are all, all Like a tentative hand <laughs> raised there. And what about um, energized adventurers? Wow. I mean, I, I guess you're not gonna you're not gonna get anybody here. <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, good question. Okay. These people all sit in the middle again. I mean, they are either too old or too young. So, the the the, the, the travelistas are are, young, is, are a younger audience. I saw a few. So so may, maybe there. maybe students, people who just have started working. 
um, are a bit um, money restricted, let's say. But as you say, high frequency, very confident, um, and uh, that's an interesting segment. And the other segment, the energized adventures, are people who are close to retirement, maybe have retired, um, have money to spend, have time and money to spend. Again, also confident, um, but also would like to relax. And those are the two target groups that we are taking more in, into focus. Actually, it's those two target groups are 37% of people in the travel market, mm -hmm. and our core um, target groups, which are three, are also 37%. So theoretically speaking, we could double our business um, if we are successful by targeting those, those uh, target groups more successfully. And how do you target them? Is yeah, that's a very good question. Yeah. So um, now the marketing guy kicks in, uh -oh. in terms of, of course, communication mm -hmm. um, is very important. and. We changed already the approach how we market our services. So we are more diverse and uh, we, we also emphasize that our products, you, you can have, of course, a package all-inclusive experience with us, right. but we are targeting or we are talking more about, let's say, all the other experiences that we have. So being more modular, having very attractive tours, um, businesses, and also the, the whole experience business under our amusement brand. Those are the things that we now, let's say, put in the window and talk more about it. And then secondly, as I said, we, we are creating propositions specifically for those target groups. So not only talking about things, but also proving it by our products. At, at, at your hotels? Yes, at our hotels. So meaning the, the Energized Adventures is hopefully then attracted by what we call the luxury proposition. Mm -hmm. And um, let's say the Saneo relaunch plus one new additional value um, brand at, at uh, let's say, the volume segment of our brand pyramid. Um, those three brands will do the job, hopefully. So you mentioned Two Amusement, which is your uh, tourism and activities brand. How does that fit into your hotel proposition, into the wholesale uh, proposition? What, what are the, uh, you know, one interesting thing is they're also, like your hotel business, going after uh, the people who aren't necessarily buying wholesale packages. Yes. So, I mean, the, the, the experience business is one of the fastest growing segments in our industry. And we are very lucky that we had the opportunity to buy a small startup years back in, in Italy that we then turned into a TUI company. And this entity does two things. So of course they serve our customers and we have many bespoke experiences that we provide only to our own customers depending on the proposition. So meaning the brand, the hotel brand you, you are with. And on top of course it's a very strong B2C proposition. So it's a little bit like the TUI hotels and resorts story. So there, there is a close connection to our core business. You could call it dependency but that also gives them the means to start their B2C business and growing outside of the TUI ecosystem. And um, again, very fast growing, um, very successful at the moment, and next to TUI hotels and resorts, one of our strengths. But it's not that lucrative of a business, right? It's... Uh... Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, it's not that big a margin right. by product, but um, it is much higher frequency. And we as a TUI group, I mean, where we came from was once in a year, a family sun and beach experience. Now with amusement, we can offer experiences while you are away, so meaning on holidays or on a destination, but we can also offer you experiences while you are in your source market, meaning the UK, Germany, and so on and so on. So it gives us an opportunity to stay in touch with our customers mm -hmm. and selling much more products into that customer, which then again helps our wholesale product, but also to hotels and resorts. Rather than just going on a vacation once or twice a year. Yes, exactly. So um, you're making a, b a big push for dynamic packages, right? Not the traditional wholesale package, which, which was a static package, right? Um, again, dynamic packages, I don't think of luxury and dynamic packages. It's mostly bargain seekers, right? Yeah, it just broadens the range of products that we are able to offer to our customers. So, I mean, um, we, we, we are born out of this vertically integration, our own hotels, 
own airlines, sorry, own retail, own hotels, own airlines, own destination services. And that is kind of limiting ourselves, um, offering attractive products to our customers. And by allowing the customer to then um, click and collect certain experience and, and build their own package out of it, um, helps us, um, again, to have more frequent usage and also, of course, a higher share of, of, um, of money from our customers. So dynamic package is not really in, in competition to what we do, right. but it's just a completion of our wholesale portfolio. Right, and you're getting big uptake with it? Yeah, I mean, it's early days, but right. what we see is that it's exactly doing what we, what we expected it to do. Mm -hmm. So it's helping us to, to round up the whole proposition. So it's not of the core of our communication at the point, but at this point, but it is a, a very good addition to what we offer at the moment. Okay, uh, feel free to put some questions uh, in the app if you have some. Um, could you talk a little bit about your digital transformation? That's been a multi-year effort. I read that you had record uh, online bookings, I think in Germany and the UK. So what's been the challenge there? It's been a, it's been a years long challenge, right? Yeah, so um, I mean, where we come from is a customer behavior that was very much retail driven. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, we it, it's taking a long time to, move that customer behavior towards digital. I mean, with the new customers, that never really has been a challenge. But mm -hmm. let's say for, for our majority of existing customers, that was rather difficult. Now, as you say, I mean, as a group, we are around 50-50 digital and, and other channels. Um, and it's fair to say that Germany is lagging behind. So if you exclude Germany, uh, we are talking more 70 to 80%. I mean, in Scandinavia, there's not a single retail um, agency left, so all is digital or um, call center sales. So it's, it's fair to say it took us some time, um, but that gave us the opportunity to build a very good proposition and a very good experience uh, for our customers. Now, what we, of course, see, as, as all of you, I guess, is that people are searching mobile and then booking online, and you spend a lot of money trying to get these customers back from when they looked up something in mobile, then exactly to your website to book those experience. So we are pushing the mobile experience a lot, um, the app experience that allows us, of course, to reduce cost of sale and also has a loyalty element built in. Um, and it's running very well. I mean, what we saw at the moment, uh, at the beginning, in the beginning is that we saw um, let's say low ASP, so lower revenue products mm -hmm. that, was, that were bought by the app. What we see now actually that it's matching retail already and in some um, instances it's even a higher revenue that we see in digital app sales than what we see in other digital channels. So that's really encouraging. So that's the whole sale component of it. If right. we now come back to Tui Hotels and Resorts, there are two additional things. One is, of course, the app as a kind of remote control of your in-resort experience. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, COVID gave it a lot of push because we, we were still operating hotels and uh, our resorts during COVID, but people were a bit anxious, so they didn't want to have too many contacts to persons, to people, and, and so they used the app heavily. They got familiar with the experience. And what we see now that all the reservations and how you organize your experience in the resort is almost only done by the app. And the second component is then, let's say, back of the house. So all the processes that, that you have as a hotel and that you need to organize to deliver a great experience, that has also shifted to what we call digital uh, front office. And that is helping us also to convince small hotel owners mm -hmm. to become part of our franchise or management proposition because they lack the, the expertise um, to know how do I actually, um, what, kind of what kind of product do I take? I mean, how do I implement it? How do I train my staff? All these things are done by us. Right. Uh, so they benefit from it. And that's, I would say, maybe at the first 25% but um, is, is moving more quickly and, and has a good momentum. Right. 
So you haven't always been a first adopter of technology. What about chat GBT and AI? And I mean, is, is, that, is that in your, in your playbook? Yeah, I, I love that. Um, I, I use it myself. I mean, it's great to play around with it, right? I made up if, these if, questions using it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, you couldn't. I tell. didn't know that it's that clever, but uh, <laughs> ah. so maybe I do my presentations then with it uh, moving forward. But um, I was told that you can everything that you create with it, you can put back into it and ask it, "Have you created it?" So. <laughs> Uh, I told my sons to be careful when they, let's say, submit things to school or university. But coming back to AI, so we are looking into ChatGPT, of course, that's great, absolutely amazing. Many use cases um, I see, especially in customer service, probably that's something where we, where we start with. Artificial intelligence overall, very interesting. I mean, we use it to reduce face, uh, uh, food waste. So we, we put it into the trash cans and we, we measure what kind of food, food gets into the trash can and then we try to reduce, let's say, those things that have been put into the trash can because we assume it was, it was not that delicious or attractive to, to our guests um, and, and we can do better. So there are many ways to apply the, the new technology and um, I can't wait to see the first use case going live. Lots of people in, in, in TUI are currently working on it, lots of different use cases. And it's one of these things where you need to say, hold your horses, let's focus a little bit, because everyone is so excited right. to work for it uh, that, that we need to, let's say, make sure that we don't dilute the resource just by doing too many things in the beginning. Right. These are very early days, so Agreed. plenty of time to test and learn. So you talked about uh, guests at your hotels using your digital products. In what other ways are guest expectations um, changing when they arrive at the hotel? And how do you differentiate from other brands? Yeah. So sustainability is, is and we've heard it before today, is definitely something where people are more interested in. in. Circular economy is something that people are more, more asking about. Uh, what did you say? Circular economy. So, circular economy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's that? So, so meaning that we really make sure that we don't produce too much waste mm -hmm. and that they see things coming back and, and uh, reducing, um, again, waste and, and throw waste things. So those are the things that people are asking us. And um, I think we are well, very well prepared for that. We, we, every week, we are turning uh, hotels into zero emission hotels. So we, we have a couple of cases every week where we, let's say, take investments and take out the emission within the resort. And uh, that's, that's a good proposition to our guests. Now, the second is, of course, um, technology. But we are a leisure proposition. And people stay with us for seven or 10 days, and they want to have a great time. And what I sometimes miss when I'm at conferences like this, that people, let's say, are super excited with all the technology that they bombard their customers with. But mm -hmm. actually, people are there to have a great time. And right. what we saw coming out of COVID was that people are really demanding interaction with guests or staff. And that's something where, of course, technology helps to free up time for our staff to talk more to our guests and to, to create more experiences for our guests. So that's something that we also, again, refocus on after having created a lot of um, um, plastic shields and whatsoever in resorts right. to protect <laughs> everyone. Now, to take these things out and uh, to make it a more interactive experience again for our customers. Right. Here's one from the audience. Does TUI plan to create a hotel in the metaverse? How high is the metaverse on your list of priorities? Not that high. Not yeah. that high. <laughs> you have not to admit. Th not, not that high. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I have to admit, I'm, I have to say personally, I'm not that convinced of that. Yeah. Uh, they have to definitely have a lot to prove. Anyway, uh, another one. Uh, if the purpose of TUI is to explore new horizons, and broadening people's minds, how do you uniquely develop and invest in your people to be able to do this? Well, that's a very good question. Um, that depends, of course, on leadership. Um, we are investing a lot into leadership. I mean, as all of us, I guess, we, we have difficulties finding people. And the game has changed uh, in terms of you are not asking that many questions to the people who you want to have working for you, but they are asking you a lot of questions. Ah. 
uh, why should they work for you? And um, we, we had to think about, let's say, our employer branding, our employer image, and these kind of things. And we have invested during the last uh, six to nine months a lot of time into coming up with a proposition for people who are interested to work for TUI. And it's, it's just going live these days, and I, I hope it creates a lot of resonance in the market. I mean, we see that we, we have more applicants these days, so uh, people seem to be more interested in working for TUI again. I guess that's also an industry trend. I hear also from colleagues that people are again more interested to work um, in our industry, but still, it's not getting more people. I mean, we, right. we need to find ways to cope with that shortage. Right. So that's another marketing job for you as yes. the uh, recasting your image as an employer. So great. Thank you, Eric. Thanks, Dennis. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>